Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. In this module, we will study the process of disinfection and along with that we will also study the mode of action of the disinfectants and also the factors affecting the disinfection process as well as the types of disinfectants. Students, as we all know that our natural environment contains numerous microorganisms. Most of these present no concern to the health issue. However, some of the microorganisms such as Vibrio cholerae, Salmonella typhi, Giardia and various enteric bacteria, viruses and protozoa which are present in the water supply, they are extremely harmful and they can cause the diseases like typhoid, cholera, amoebic dysentery, viral gastroenteritis and hepatitis in the human beings. These de disease causing microorganisms are known as pathogens. The disinfection of the wastewater is very important to public health because the diseases can be transmitted directly and indirectly through the uh, drinking of this contaminated water or the contaminated water which is indirectly used for the irrigation purpose, amusement purpose or for the food processing. The drinking water must be completely free from the pathogenic microorganisms and for this the best process in the water treatment plant is the disinfection. Water disinfection is a technique which is designed to destroy or inactivate most of the microorganisms in the wastewater. The technique of disinfection is a last step in the water treatment process and uh, this is enforced directly to the wastewater for the control of the pathogenic microorganisms which cause harmful diseases to the living organisms. From many years, chlorination is used for the disinfection purpose in the water treatment system and this chlorination process, it controls the odor also the way it will also kill the various disease causing microorganisms present in the wastewater. The application of the disinfectants inactivates the pathogens by destroying the cellular structure or it disrupts the metabolism and makes them unable to multiply and in case of bacteria, the inactivation means inability of these bacteria to divide and form the colonies. Inactivation of the viruses makes them unable to infect the host cell and similarly inactivation of the protozoans like the cryptosporidium oocyst makes it unable to multiply and thus prevent the spread of its infection. There are two kinds of disinfectants, primary disinfectants and secondary disinfectants. So let us start these uh, disinfectants one by one. Primary disinfection. The kind of disinfection achieves the desired level of microorganism kill or their inactivation, while the secondary disinfection not only achieves the desired level of disinfection, but maintains a residual disinfectant concentration in the finished water, which prevents the regrowth of the microorganisms. So now the question comes, what are disinfectants? Disinfectants are the substances which are applied to the biotic or abiotic surfaces directly on the skin, in the bathroom, kitchen or in the production facilities or can be added to the water in of the swimming pool or the treatment water in the sea, uh, water treatment system. The disinfecting agents are registered by Environmental Protection Agency as the antimicrobial compounds and these are the substances which are used to control, prevent or destroy the harmful microorganisms like bacteria, viruses or fungi and they must provide 99.9 percent inactivation of the microorganisms, their cyst and enteric viruses to protect the health. What are the properties of the disinfectants? Now these disinfectants should have the wide spectrum of the activity. They should be competent to destroy the microorganisms, should be operating in the presence of the organic matter because after the secondary treatment of the waste water, still a little of the organic matter is present in the water. So these disinfectants should work in the presence of the organic matter. They should be effective in any pH and should have the high penetrating power. It should be, they should be non-toxic, non-allergenic, non-irritative non-corrosive and should not leave any non-volatile residues or stain. 
their efficacy should not be lost on reasonable dilution. And last but not the least, they should not be expensive and must be easily available. Now, let us study the factors which are affecting the efficacy of the disinfectants. These factors include the nature of the disinfectant. When a killing action is implied to the disinfectant, the suffix side is added like bactericide, virucide, sporicide. This means that these disinfectants, they are able to kill the bacteria, viruses or even the spores of the bacteria. And when the suffix static is used, it means that the organism's growth is merely inhibited and it is prevented from multiplying like bacteriostatic, virostatic, sporostatic. The second factor which is affecting the efficacy or efficiency of disinfectant is the concentration of the disinfectant. The high concentration of the disinfectant is going to kill large number of population and as the disinfectant uh, is diluted, its efficacy decreases. Third factor is the duration of the contact time between the disinfectant and the microorganism. As the duration of the contact time between the disinfectant and the microorganism, it increases the efficacy of the disinfectant also increases. The relationship between the kill efficiency and the contact time of the disinfectant was developed by Harriet Chick and this is also known as Chick's law. This Chick's law predicts that decrease in the survival ratio of the microorganisms which is shown on the graph on the vertical axis exponentially with increasing contact time between the disinfectant and the water to be uh, disinfected. Later on, this Chick's equation was modified by Watson to account for varying type of disinfectants and he developed the coefficients of specific lethality which is denoted by lambda that represents the strength of the disinfectant as well as the pH of the water. The equation is log value of the survival ratio of the microorganisms is equal to the specific lethality coefficient lambda multiplied by the contact time and the concentration of the disinfectant. Next parameter which is affecting the efficiency of the disinfectant is the temperature at which the wastewater is present, the type and the population of the microorganisms present in the wastewater as well as pH and ionic strength of the wastewater. Now coming to the measurement of effectiveness of the disinfectants. The effectiveness of the disinfectants is calculated by comparing it against a known disinfectant. Phenol is the standard disinfectant and is the corresponding rating system is called phenol coefficient. The disinfectant to be tested is compared with the phenol on a standard microorganism. The standard microorganism is usually Salmonella typhi or Streptococcus aureus. Disinfectants that are more effective than phenol, they have a coefficient greater than 1 and the disinfectants which are less efficient than the phenol, they are having the coefficient less than 1. An alternative assessment is also there to measure the minimum inhibitory concentration of the disinfectants against the selected microbial species. And this assessment is based upon the assay which use the micro broth dilution testing method or the disc diffusion assay. Now let us discuss the types of disinfectants. The disinfectants are characterized into three activity levels according to the classification given by US EPA. First class is the high level disinfectants. These type of disinfectants kill the vegetative microorganisms and also inactivates the viruses, but not necessarily the high number of the bacterial spores. Such disinfectants are capable of sterilization when the contact time is relatively long, approximately in the range of 6 to 10 hours. As high level disinfectants, they are used for relatively short period of the time. These chemical germicides are potent sporicides and in the United States, they are classified by the FDA as the sterilant or disinfectants. They are formulated for use on medical devices, but not on the environmental surfaces like laboratory benches or floors. The second level 
of the disinfectant is the intermediate disinfectants. These disinfectants kill the vegetative microorganisms including mycobacterium tuberculosis, all fungi and also inactivate most of the viruses. These chemical germicides used uh, often corresponds to the tube, uh, tuberculosidal class as per the environmental protection agency classification. They are used commonly in the laboratories for disinfection of the laboratory benches and also as part of the detergent germicides used in the housekeeping purposes. The third level of the disinfectant is the low level disinfectants. These type of disinfectants kill most of the vegetative bacteria except mycobacterium tuberculosis, some fungi and also inactivate some viruses. The Environmental Protection Agency approves these chemical germicides as the hospital disinfectants or the sanitizers. Different methods of dis uh, disinfection. Now, as you can see in the figure, the disinfection can be achieved either by a physical process or by the chemical process. The physical process involves heat treatment, the treatment with the UV light or the radiations where the microwaves, gamma rays, they are used to achieve the disinfection. In the chemical process of the disinfection, alcohols, aldehydes, phenols, quaternary ammonium compounds, halogens, oxidizing agents are used to achieve the disinfection. Let us discuss them one by one. First, the physical disinfection. The physical methods of disinfection includes heat. Heat is the most common physical agent used for the decontamination of the pathogens. Boiling does not necessarily kill all the microorganisms or pathogens, but it may be used as a minimum processing for the disinfection where other methods are not applicable or available. The heat treatment is of two types, moist heat sterilization and the dry heat treatment. Moist heat is most effective in achieving sterilization because in moist heat treatment, water at high pressure uh, at uh, 15 pounds per inch square pressure and this pressure corresponds to the temperature of 121 degree C is used in a specific instrument called autoclave. All the organisms and endospores, they are killed within 15 minutes. The temperature of the steam in this method is lower, but when compared to the dry heat sterilization, but the high pressure helps the effective sterilization to take place. The structural proteins and the enzymes of the microbial cells are destroyed through the moist heat, resulting in the death of the organism. Moist heat method is used for heat sensitive materials and materials through which steam is permeable. Through moist heat sterilization, the most resistant spores also will be destroyed and the temperature required is 121 degree C for 20 minutes. The another method of heat disinfection is the dry heat sterilization. In dry heat sterilization, the dry heat is used for disinfection uh, of the different materials which can withstand the temperature of more than 160 degree C or higher for 2 to 4 hours. Hot air or fire is used in this process. Burning or incineration is a form of dry heat. As compared to the moist heat sterilization, the temperature in this method is higher. The temperature is usually greater than 180 degree C. The dry heat helps in killing the organisms and using the destructive oxidation method. The essential cell constituents are destroyed by the heat treatment and therefore, the microbial cell or the organism dies. The temperature is maintained for almost an hour to kill the most difficult resistant spores. The laboratory things such as glassware, metal instruments, paper wrapped things and syringes made up of heat resistant material are effectively sterilized through the dry heat. The next physical process to achieve the disinfection is the radiation. The types of radiations which are generally employed to kill the microorganisms are ionizing radiations, non-ionizing radiations, microwave radiations and ultrasonic sound. Ionizing radiations. 
these radiations include gamma rays, X rays, electron beam or high energy rays. They have short wavelength approximately less than a nanometer and they are mainly used to sterilize the pharmaceutical and disposable medical supplies and also used in the food industry. Non-ionizing radiations that include the ultraviolet light cause maximum destruction in the range of wavelength from 250 to 265 nanometer. These radiations are produced by a low pressure mercury lamp constructed of a quartz or a special glass. The maximum disinfection is achieved with adequate intensity and the time of exposure of UV rays with the water which is free from suspended and colloidal substances and the water is flowing in the form of thin sheets. The advantage of this method is that the exposure is for the short period of time and no taste and odor is produced and complete destruction of microorganisms is achieved. Microwave radiations also used for the disinfection process and the wavelength which is used is ranging between 1 millimeter to 1 meter. These microwaves help in killing the vegetative cells in the presence of moisture. Heat is absorbed by the water molecules but the bacterial endospores as they are the dried forms, they do not contain the water so they are not damaged by the microwave radiation. The next kind of radiations belong to ultrasonic sound where the waves of frequency of approximately 400 kilohertz have been testified to provide the complete sterilization in 60 minutes. These waves are very effective for water disinfection. There is, is no germicidal effect of these waves but the large reduction in the bacterial number is observed within 2 second exposure of the wastewater. After the physical processes of disinfection, now let us discuss the chemical disinfection process. The chemical disinfection is achieved by using the chemical disinfectants which are antimicrobial agents that will kill or inhibit the growth of the microorganisms. The exact mode of disinfection by the antimicrobial agents depends upon the type and the concentration of the disinfectant as well as the type of the pathogen being targeted. The commonly used dis chemical disinfectants belong to the class of alcohols. The widely used products are ethyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol and normal propanol. These alcohols they show broad spectrum antimicrobial activity and they are effective against gram positive and negative bacteria as well as against the viruses but they cause no effect on the bacterial spores. Due to the lack of sporocidal activity, they are widely used for hard surface disinfection and skin antiseptics, but they are not used for sterilization. Absolute ethanol is a dehydrating agent, so it is having less of the bactericidal activity than mixture of alcohol and water. That is why instead of absolute ethanol, 70 to 95 percent volume by volume concentration of ethanol or isopropanol is used as a general disinfectant. They are most effective against lipophilic viruses, less effective against non-lipid viruses and ineffective against bacterial spores. Because of the quick evaporation rate of the alcohol, it may be difficult to achieve the sufficient contact time between the disinfectant and the water to be treated or the surface to be treated. Generally isopropyl alcohol is having the greater lipophilic properties than the ethyl alcohol. So is effective against the bacteria but is less active against the hydrophilic viruses like the polio virus while the ethyl alcohol is more effective against the hydrophilic viruses. The mode of action of the alcohol is through protein coagulation denaturation and the associated disruption of cytoplasmic integrity which will finally lead to cell lysis and interference with the cellular metabolism. As we know that the proteins get denatured easily when alcohol is used with water. Alcohol induced 
coagulation of protein occurs at the cell wall, cytoplasmic membrane and among the various plasma proteins and the coagulation of these proteins leads to loss of cellular functions. Alcohol targets the bacterial cell wall which results in the lysis of the cell membrane and release of cellular contents. Because of the bacteriostatic action of the alcohol, it is used to inhibit the growth of the microorganisms and the cells they will not multiply. The second class of the disinfectants belongs to the category of phenols. Phenol solution have been used as a antiseptic or as a preservative or as a disinfectant. They are generally considered as protoplasmic poisons. Phenol act only at the point of separation of the chromosomal pair during the cell division. That is why the young bacterial cells are more sensitive than the older cells to phenol. Phenol also coagulates the cytoplasmic constituents at higher concentrations causing the irreversible cellular damage. It possesses both antifungal and antiviral properties. The usefulness of phenols in the laboratories is limited because they leave a sticky residue on the surface after the treatment. Concentrated phenol is highly toxic as well as corrosive that is easily absorbed through the skin. So use of phenol should be accompanied with appropriate personal protection as well as we should have to work cautiously with the phenolic disinfectants. The next class of chemical disinfectant belongs to aldehydes and glutaraldehyde is a very important dialdehyde which is used for the disinfection purpose. Glutaraldehydes they possess high antimicrobial activity and they are effective against all types of bacteria, fungi, viruses and with sufficient contact time they can even kill the bacterial spores. Glutaraldehyde acts as a disinfectant at low temperature and helps in sterilization of the surgical equipments and endoscopes. While glutaraldehyde vapors are less irritating than the formaldehyde, but still they remain irritating to the eyes, mucous membrane and upper respiratory tract. The exposure should be minimized and the uh, use should be confined only to the fume hood. Glutaraldehyde is more active at the alkaline pH than the acidic pH. As the external pH is changed from the acidic to the alkaline side, more reactive sites will be formed on the cell surface, which will lead to a more rapid bactericidal effect. After glutaraldehydes, the another kind of aldehydes which are used as the disinfectant are the formaldehyde, which is also known as formalin and this is a 37 percent weight by volume solution of formaldehyde gas in water. Diluted to 5 percent concentration, it is an effective disinfectant and even at 0.2 2.4 concentration, it can inactivate the bacteria and viruses. Unlike chlorine, formalin does not corrode the stainless steel, but it has a pungent irritating odor. Therefore, the exposure must be limited due to its toxicity and carcinogenicity. It acts as a mutagenic agent as well as an alkylating agent. It reacts with nucleic acid and also inhibits the synthesis of DNA. Its mechanism of action is not well known, but it is known that the cross-linking properties play a major role in the disinfection process. The another kind of chemical disinfectant is chlorhexidine. This chlorhexidine is a bactericidal agent and this is basically used in hand wash and oral products due to its broad spectrum efficacy and low irritation. It is pH dependent product and its activity is reduced in the presence of organic matter. It damages the outer cell layer and then crosses the cell wall or outer membrane pre, uh, by passive diffusion and subsequently it attacks the bacterial cytoplasmic or inner membrane, but this is not sufficient to induce the lysis or the cell death. Damage to the semi-permeable membrane leads to leakage of intracellular constituents of the cell. After the aldehydes, oxidizing agents are also acting as a disinfectant 
and the commonly used oxidizing agent is hydrogen peroxide, which is widely used disinfectant, sterilizant and the antiseptic. It is environmental friendly also because the commercially available uh, hydrogen peroxide ranges between 3 to 90 percent and after its action, it can rapidly degrade into water and oxygen. Hydrogen peroxide has the broad spectrum efficacy against viruses, bacteria, yeast and bacterial spores. Generally, greater activity is seen against the gram positive bacteria than the gram negative bacteria. How? Because the presence of catalase or other peroxidase enzymes in these organisms can increase their tolerance to hydrogen peroxide. Higher concentrations of hydrogen peroxide in the range of 10 to 30 percent and longer contact times they are required for the sporicidal activity. Although this activity is significantly increased in the gaseous phase. This hydrogen peroxide acts as an oxidant by producing hydroxyl free radicals which attack the essential cell components including lipids, proteins and DNA. Once these essential biocomponents or biomolecules are destroyed, the cell will ultimately die. It has been proposed that the exposed sulfhedral groups and the double bonds of these biomolecules are particularly target by, targeted by the hydrogen peroxide. After the hydrogen peroxide, the most commonly oxidizing agent is the chlorine compounds. The chlorinated compounds uh, like the household bleach which is 5.25 percent sodium hypochlorite. It is the universal disinfectant and with proper concentration and sufficient contact time, this hypochlorite solution can be considered a chemical sterilant since they can even inactivate the bacterial spores. The disadvantage of the chlorine compounds is that they are quickly inactivated by the uh, presence of organic material and they are corrosive to metals and tissues. They are also producing a obnoxious odor and its presence is a environmental concern. Other halogens like bromine and iodine, they are also having the good disinfection property. They are also good oxidizing agents are and are available in the form of pills and tablets. Uh, generally used disinfectant is povidone iodine and these halogens as they are costlier than chlorine, so their application is limited. Potassium permanganate KMnO4, it is also a strong oxidizing agent and possesses germicidal properties. It is generally used for the removal of iron and manganese from the wastewater and as well as it also removes the odor. It oxidizes the organic matter present in the water. That is why it is commonly used for the wastewater disinfection. The quaternary ammonium compounds are also used for the dis chemical disinfection and they are having wide germicidal range, they are non corrosive in nature as well as they are having the low toxicity. Along with that some metal lines like silver, copper, iron and mercury, they are also having the disinfection property. After the chemical processes the membrane processes they are also used for the disinfection. These processes help in the removal of microorganisms, the extent to which dissolved solids, turbidity and microorganisms are removed from the water depends upon the size of the pores in the membrane. The substances that are larger than the pores in the membrane are fully removed and the substances which are smaller than the pores of the membrane are partially removed depending upon the construction of the membrane layer. The different membrane processes include microfiltration, ultrafiltration and reverse osmosis. Microfiltration. Microfiltration is a membrane separation where the pore size of the membrane ranges between 0.03 to 10 microns and the operating pressure is 100 to 400 kilopascal. Uh, representative materials which are removed in the microfiltration process include sand, silt, clay, giardia and cryptosporidium cyst, algae and some of the bacterial species. 
as this microfiltration is not an absolute barrier to the viruses, only part of the viral contamination is caught up in the process. The primary impetus for the use of microfiltration process has been the increasingly stringent requirements for removing the particles and microorganisms from the drinking water supply. And additionally, there is an emphasis on limiting the concentration and number of chemicals that are applied to the drinking water in the treatment process. So, these membrane filtration processes, they are safe to use. The another membrane filtration process is ultrafiltration, which is also a pressure driven separation of the material across the membrane. The pore size in the ultrafiltration process is in the range of 0.001 to 0.1 micron and the operating pressure is in the range of 200 to 700 kilopascal. The ultrafiltration process will remove all the microbiological species, but some of the viruses and the humic material is not separated. Disinfection can provide a second barrier to contamination and therefore, it is recommended for the drinking water. Reverse osmosis is also a membrane process and it is normally used for desalination, but also this is a process for disinfection of the water. Reverse osmosis can effectively remove the natural organic substances like pesticides, cysts, bacteria and viruses completely from the water. The water passing through the multiple units can achieve near zero affluent contaminant concentration. So, disinfection is uh, through this reverse osmosis is recommended to ensure the safety of drinking water. The advantages of these membrane processes is that is there is no need of the chemicals like in the another processes either the coagulants, flocculants or disinfectants they are added to the water, but in the membrane processes there is no need to add any chemical. The Second advantage is size exclusion filtration. This process is simple automated, but the drawback of the membrane processes is the damaging of the membrane by the hard and sharp particles from the feed water. So, the water needs to be pre filtered before these membrane processes and depending upon the composition of the water, the pore size can be adjusted in the pre filter. Students, in this module, we had learnt that the destruction, inactivation or removal of pathogenic microorganisms can be achieved by disinfection process and this allows the direct reuse of the treated wastewater. The untreated or secondary treated affluent contains a range of pathogenic microorganisms that can pose a potential risk to the health of humans or livestock, but the disinfection of the wastewater is the option before the discharge of the treated water into the environment. Disinfection of the wastewater is achieved using a variety of methods including physical methods ultra, which includes ultraviolet radiation, microwaves, gamma rays and the membrane based processes or the chemical processes which include chlorination and ozonation they are used for the disinfection. The disinfection commonly takes place because of the cell wall corrosion in the microorganisms or changes in the cell permeability, protoplast or enzyme activity and these disturbances in the cell activity cause the microorganisms to no longer be able to multiply and ultimately the microorganism will die out and the aim of the disinfection process is achieved. Thank you.